Are DMs like this the reason why business owners hate influencers? This is going viral. Let's talk about it. Listen, this is a little bit of a scuff up between a ramen restaurant in the UK and a UK influencer, but a lot of Americans are commenting on it. Woo! We got to talk about it. This went viral on Next Shark. Hundreds and hundreds of comments. Some people are supporting here. Some people are supporting over there. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. And, but you know what? We are not hiring any influencers to promote. Small ass sauce. Uh, we got people who like it, but we haven't hired any influencers yet. Anyways, it's coming back soon. So anyway, long story short, there's this place called Lucky Ramen and Sushi in the UK, and it looks pretty good. I'm going to pop up some of the photos here. They've got a duck tonkatsu, mm. some French Japanese brioche mm. brunch toast. Anyway, somebody messages them, and uh, they blocked out the account. He goes, um, hey, sorry, I know it's kind of short notice, but I'm in Manchester tomorrow, and I'm looking for somewhere to brunch with my partner. Would you open for a collab with me and a post on my story and page but then lucky ramen and them they reposted this and they aired them out saying really you know we appreciate that you like our food but we appreciate paying customers even more look another dm from a blue tick superstar asking for a free meal oh david we are i never called ourselves food influencers i always consider ourselves content creators and cultural explorers Thinkers, comedians whatever but I cannot say that this does not relate to some of what we do because we do go to restaurants sometimes right. and we've gotten some free food. We've paid for our, most of it, but sometimes we get free stuff. This London bloke, Andrew, then said, personally, I think you're bang out of order. How dare you try and expose us like that? You don't think people like us don't deserve to eat for free? Because in case you didn't realize, we are helping our best to promote you for free. So you do, you just a free meal to compensate our time, labor, effort, and positive energy we are supplying for you. So who's laughing now if you want to expose us influencers? And then of course, Andrew, Lucky Ramen and Sushi fired back again with another post and then the internet chimed in all over the place so basically david it comes down to a lot of people i feel like most people are taking the restaurant owners lucky ramen side being like yo we hate influencers they're self-entitled blah 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 and then there's another side that's not necessarily defending the influencer but there are a lot of people who are influencers themselves saying hey I get it. You guys hate influencers, but I feel like the restaurant owner might have overreacted. Probably didn't need to call him out because the message wasn't that bad. Anyways, we're going to give you our thoughts because we're unfortunately in a similar space sometimes. So I'll give you our perspective. Again, please hit that like button. We'll go through the comment section. I really didn't like the influencer's initial message. There's no punctuation. It's super short. From what I can tell, Lucky Ramen and Sushi is actually really, really popular. They do 50% off on Mondays and Tuesdays, so that's already, like, super cheap. That's 50% off is a big discount. Yeah, I, never, I never even seen a restaurant in America do that, to be honest. I was like, man, how slow are Mondays and Tuesdays? But uh, the food looks good. It looks like they run a complex system with a lot of moving mm -hmm. parts. Why would you message somebody? And it's not like they had 360,000 followers or 3.6 million followers on influ uh, on Instagram. This person who's asking for the free meal only had 36,000. Right. And uh, I will say this. The restaurant owner blocking out the name of the influencer does help. And I respect that a little bit more than actually airing out their entire identity. Right. You because know, that because, would have brought them a ton of negative. Yeah. Press, because, but it also would have made them look bad, too. Right. Because the restaurant owner is more attacking influencers in general now instead of this particular influencer by blocking out the face and identity. But anyways, so you don't like the initial message. How bad is it, though, on a scale of one to five, five being the worst? Five being the worst, I give it a 2.5. So it's not like the worst th message, yeah. but it definitely could have been worded differently because I know that a lot of people will message business owners. Like, this is something that just people do and say like, hey, I'd love to like film at your spot. Is there a time to do it? But you're right, the way it's worded and kind of like they didn't really offer enough value in the beginning, it, it did seem a little bit like, I'd say that wasn't great. Right, so other people were saying, why is this owner of Lucky Sushi and Ramen so sassy though too? Like, do you think that they, I mean, Aren't they within their right to pop off, though? If they feel like they work hard at their business and the influencers are not valuing their work, so, do they have the right to air them out? Because it brings them more press to air them out. Yeah, so so I think there's two plays. One, the restaurant owner, by calling out the influencer, kind of gets some attention for themselves. Right, like me which, and you now know what Lucky Sushi and Ramen in Manchester is, and I never was going to know who they are. Right, now, but I will say that initial message isn't exactly disrespectful in itself. 
right. in itself, word for word, is not disrespectful. They didn't say, oh, well, you better give me this or else I'm going to, you know, never come by. Or leave a negative review. Right? Yeah. Now, the, the next message from the influencer in response was super entitled. And so, therefore, I do believe that this influencer is not handling this correctly. So, anyways, basically, my whole take is I feel like the restaurant owner might have overreacted a little bit, but that initial influencer has shown their their true colors and is an entitled little punk. You know why I realized, I went on the Instagram page of Lucky Sushi and Ramen and they're popping. Like on certain days, they have like a big ass line and uh, they're one of the only like modern Pan-Asian fusion spots right. in like all of Manchester, which is like one of the, you know, not London, but one of the bigger cities in the UK. They're the only people bringing that hyper-modern, like, you know, Singapore, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. New York vibe yeah. there. So aren't they... I could see why, like, they're proud. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're probably busting their ass to accomplish this culture. Yeah, spacing. running a restaurant in a city is not easy. All right, so here's my take. I don't think that people should blanket and hate all influencers, but they should hate this type of influencer. Mm. This self-important, self-entitled, bad grammar, no mini EPK, no electronic press kit. They didn't even try to make a pitch. Because if you value yourself like an advertising firm because that's the you what you believe you're adding to the economy, mm -hmm. then why don't you make a pitch like an advertising firm? For example, I guess what would you have wanted them to say? Let's edit their message to something that doesn't warrant a reaction like that. Um, Hey, sorry for the late notice. I was wondering if I could come through in exchange for a meal. And if you really want to even say that, sometimes you just got to leave it up to the restaurant to comp it or give you half off or whatever. I can give you this amount of st IG stories, this amount of static posts. I've done had this amount of reach and this much uh, amount of impact. And here's some analytics. Okay. You justify yourself. Okay. Provide the business case for this business transaction. And then, and then I think you should add on, hey, by the way, if you're super busy and you don't want to deal with this, that's fine. I totally understand. I might still come by anyways. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I think as a, as a person who wants content out of it or a meal, if that's your goal, first of all, you shouldn't just film at restaurants that you want a free meal at. You shouldn't just do it just because, hey, I need a free meal somewhere and ugh, I don't want to pay for lunch. But if you are going to go into a restaurant, you have to be ready to not pay. Like, to me, all these spots that we've ever filmed at, we go in there. Sometimes we'll walk in and we'll just be like, hey, by the way, I'm going to order some food, but I'm just going to like film a little video on the side. Is that right. cool? And then they're like, oh, okay, cool. And then they're like, oh, sometimes they're like, oh, can I bring you out some extra stuff? And I'm like, that's and fine. That Whatever you want to bring. I'm going to pay. I, I, I'm ready to pay though. And let's be honest. There may have been some sort of like cunty vibe that the lucky ramen sushi owner picked up from this influencer. I mean, just look at their initial message, pop it back up. Andrew, here are some reasons why the internet says that they hate influencers. S number one, self-obsession reigns supreme. Narcissism. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I'm not saying all, but a lot of influencers are narcissistic. Yeah. Spreading mindless consumerism. Number two. I agree. Number three, fake AF lifestyles trying to make their life look perfect. We all know it's really not that good. Point number four, inauthentic relationships. They'd be friends with other influencers to cross-pollinate the yeah. user bases but not actually be homies. Th this is exactly why I don't call ourselves influencers. I know that we fall within that category. I get it. I get it. But I don't use that term for myself. I always correct people. Exploiting FOMO for personal gain. Turning friendships into transactions, the glorification of hedonism, undermining real talent, breeding a culture of entitlement, and dumbing down our society. Now, the number one job that most middle and high school kids want in America is to be an influencer because they see it as a talentless way to live a Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift superstar lifestyle without having any of the talent that they have. I will never forget this quote. It says, you call yourself an influencer, but what are you influencing people to do? Let's get into the comment section, Andrew. Somebody said, meanwhile, brands expecting influencers to work for free in exchange for samples. Restaurants do this too. I'm pro-influencer. I'm an influencer myself. I'm defending influencers. That was one of the perspectives that I saw. Um, yeah, I could see that. I think, like I said, if you're going to offer the value, make the case, and then let the business decide whether they want to do the integration or not. Yeah. Once you yeah, I, I think just trust me. Even the tone of what you write matters a lot nowadays, guys, in your DMs. If you say, hey, man, uh, big fan of your restaurant. Um, I don't know if you guys do this type of thing, but I'd love to come by and do a meal and do some posts. 
Uh, if you could help out with the meal, that's great. If not, that's okay. Mm-hmm. And you just humble yourself and say, that's okay if you can't do it. If you had thrown, if they had thrown some of that language in there, I think it would have softened the message. And then that restaurant could have just ignored it or said no. But since it just, it just didn't, it was lacking a little bit of that. Uh, you got to DM correctly, guys. Well, they weren't trying very hard. They weren't trying. Somebody said, I work at a trendy restaurant. I have to deal with influencers. It's a nightmare. They're always asking for free stuff, throwing a tantrum, name dropping, not letting the food runners and servers do their job, uh, basically clogging up the system because they want to take their food a certain way and get a certain lighting. So basically, this person was like saying, like, I'm against them as somebody who works in the restaurant industry. Of course, Andrew, there was some debate about how much an impact an influencer has on a restaurant's bottom line. Okay, so... The truth is certain TikToks and Instagrams have gone viral and changed that business for that year or maybe changed the course of that business You're talking about uh, Keith Lee, for example, where he reviews a lot of businesses in certain cities, Yeah, just everybody. We have a whole bunch of food influencer friends in in New York that some of their things have gone viral and actually and just changed that business, to be honest. Like- but, and, but sometimes it's just hot for a moment and then it fizzles yeah, back out. No, I mean, and sometimes it doesn't do anything. I get it. So there is no, like, the best thing that a restaurant can do is if they have the organization is do like a PR day where they invite influencers to come try. And it's just an influencer day. So it's like, hey, we invited you. Let's get some free food. But everybody's got to give us content. That's, that's a totally fair exchange. And that right. happens all the time. But I think when you go in there and you start messing with the system like he said like things are quick and you're like hold on hold on hold on can you move the thing and then you get and then you get oh can you make that look better oh can you move my french toast and it's like then you're just like yo chill out like what who do you think you are now if you got 10 million viewers and you know like you're like uh, i hate to say it but like you're a celebrity like a kim k or a bella hadid maybe you can ask for more things like that but ultimately like just stay out of their way all right so i have two final thoughts andrew Usually, the really big influencers, they don't ask for free stuff because it's e- they're either going to get it for sure or they made enough money influencing they can just do things for free for content. That's for a good themselves. point. It's always the mid-level people. Yeah. It's just sort of like mid-level famous people almost might be meaner than the hyper-famous people. Yes. When it comes to especially mom-and-pop restaurants, just go in with the expectation you're going to pay, man. Just be ready to pay. Like, And sometimes you'll get some free stuff. Maybe they'll offer. You don't have to take it. Maybe you take it, but to ask and like bug them about it and kind of be like, well, you know, I, I have followers, you know, that's like the last thing the restaurant was going to be like, yo. And everybody's in struggle too. I remember one time we drove like maybe $10,000 worth of business to this dim sum restaurant in uh, Monterey park. I won't name it Atlantic seafood and dim sum. Shout out to them though. I hope they're still doing good, but I remember they gave us a free diet Coke and that was the only thing that they gave us. And I was just like, Oh, it's all good. You know what I mean? But I did go. You mean after the video yeah, after, came out? after he was like, oh my back. God, you brought us so much business, man. Here's a free Diet Coke. Yeah, and I was just like, yeah, because I know that's still, but you know the funny thing is, to me, because I know that like some of those people from the old school Canto or just in Chinese in general are so cheap. It was like, that still meant something to me because I know that he doesn't give free Diet Cokes to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, certain people are going to give you a lot of free food. Some people are... Maybe not even going to reward you. Some people will reward you for whatever right. they f- attention you they thought you brought. Just just know that it is not an expectation that you're not entitled to it. Right. If you, you go back again and you have to pay for a full meal because the manager doesn't see you, they're not there that day, or they forgot, or they didn't see your story no or whatever. Th- no authorization, right? It's, it is whatever. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. You know Do you I mean? think, though, I will say this final point, that... The fact that the num- everybody wants to be an influencer and the fact that celebrity culture, it seems in this late, late stage capitalism system that we're in, Andrew, that's why some influencers, I'm not saying all influencers, but a portion of influencers that are high profile, the ones that nobody likes, they are self-important because all these factors are coming together to allow them to feel self-important over a doctor, over a lawyer. You know what I mean? Somebody structural to this society, a policeman. I'm saying... The, the worship of celebrity and the fact that all the kids want to be them, theoretically, that's what makes them have an inflated self. Yeah, I think one thing that you have to realize, too, is when you DM them, you're, like, DMing somebody who's, like, in the middle of their day managing the restaurant, and then they have to look at their DM and then deal with you and schedule something in the DM. You know what's actually better is if you call the restaurant and you try to speak to a manager, 
and you just ask them and you tell the manager on the spot, yo, this is what it is. Hey, if I, oh, could I come in and film, blah, 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 blah. And then if the manager's like, uh, sorry, no. Then you, that's it. That's right. the answer. And there's no controversy about that. But when you just like ask, you're asking someone to go into their DMs and deal with you while they're trying to serve food. It is, it is like a whole different thing. So For uh, sure. And also, all these people who are just like the trendy foodies, it's way different than what we did, which is like supporting the dude, community and going into like the dude, spots that these people dude, would never even set foot in. Just tell them. If you're going to DM and you want to let a restaurant know you're coming, just tell them, hey, I got a table. I'm gonna, I'll see you there. I'm going to be there tonight. I'm very excited. And you leave it at that. And if they read it and they see your thing and they're like, oh, that's really cool. Thanks for coming. And then they want to give you a discount. Great. But then you just told them that you're coming. So then there's nothing like you're not asking anything, but you're, you are notifying them so then they can make their own decision. You know? So anyway, anyways, guys, let us know what you think. Ton of comments both ways. Obviously, mostly supporting the restaurant, but not everybody was. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.